in the room. Hey, Tyrell, congrats on the win. Um, just give me an overall assessment of your performance. How do you think you did out there tonight? I think I was really happy with the first round. Um, after the first round, my legs kind of went for some reason. Um, I had felt that a little bit in the back, tried to get some sprints to wake them up, but they just got real heavy and kind of loose. I didn't understand why. Um, so I was just trying to like work through that. First time that that's ever happened to me in a fight. So I was just trying to fight, fight through it and, and figure it out. Yeah, do you think that would be just like a one-time thing or something you have to go back and assess why that happened? Um, I think it was more like adrenaline or nerves kind of thing. I, I felt it before I got in the cage a little bit, tried to like sprint it out, thinking I could like pump it out or something. And uh, after the first round, it just became more prevalent. So I'm not sure. I think it was just the nerves and the adrenaline going through me too much. Yeah. That's about it. And uh, what did you think of your opponent's performance? Were you, were you surprised by anything he presented to you? I know you'd only had six pro fights, but he had a good amateur, uh, good regional title under his belt. So talk to me about the matchup and what you saw out of him. Uh, he was a little quick than, uh, than what I expected for a little bit. Um, other than that, he didn't do anything I didn't expect. Him trying to shoot on me, I thought was very, uh, I, was, I was silly. I thought, you know, like, and my coach was, you know, yelling, don't get taken down. I'm like, dude, chill. Like, if I get taken down, bro, it's over. Like, in a position like that, for me, I'm, you're just wasting your time, I feel like. So I wasn't worried there. I, that was the only thing I thought was like, okay, you're dumb. Like, you lost the fight because you tried to take me down. So that was it. I just, Sorry, continue. No, you're good. Co-main event slot, too. Uh, I mean, do, do you feel like you use that position on the card pretty well? Like, what, what do you think's next for you? Do you think you could fight in a, a main event, big title, uh, contender fight? What are you thinking? I mean, I'm... Me personally, I'm disappointed with my performance uh, with that just because of uh, how I felt. And I felt like I could have done a lot more. I know my coaches too. Um, so I think I could have been uh, done a lot better. But yeah, I think I utilize, you know, my opportunities as much as I can. And I go out there and fight to the best of my ability wherever, whatever slot, you know, I'm in. So I don't think the slot to me doesn't really matter as long as I'm in a cage and i got a job to do. Would you like a top contender next? Do you feel like that that, that will be the fight? This fight was supposed to be against Sergey Kuratanov. And I stepped up, you know, I'm, I was originally scheduled to fight Linton in December. And uh, we both had accepted that fight. And then Kuratanov's opponent fell out. And so Bellator asked me, hey, do you want to step up and fight Sergey? I was like, hell yeah, I want to fight Sergey. I stepped up and then Sergey was like, I don't want to fight Tyrell. So I, I even hit him up on Instagram, called him a little bitch and, you know, talked some shit to him and he didn't respond. So um, I'm, I'm hoping I, I'll take Sergey if he want, unless he wants to keep running. You've taken, this is your second fight back since Bellator came back from the pandemic. Are you trying to squeeze a third one in this year? Or do you think it'll probably be early next year when we see you again? I'm, I'm, I'm probably thinking early next year. Um, if, I, if they want, if they, if they ask me to step up again, I'm damn sure I will. So I don't turn my collar down for nothing. Our next question will come from the line of Jay Anderson. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, Terrell, congrats on the win tonight. Um, he you. did seem to, to catch you once or twice at the end of the second. How hurt were you and what was the thought process entering round three? Uh, man, I knew I was only caught because my legs felt weird and I wasn't moving like I used to. So I usually use my feet to get me in and out. But with me not feeling my legs, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't hurt too bad or anything. He touched me, but that was about it. It was just more or less trying to reassess what he was trying to go through after that and keep protecting myself. And what was this going through your head when the scores were being read out tonight? Um, I, I felt like I had one. I asked Beltran right there when he was holding my hands. I was like, hey, I slipped. You know, during that exchange, do you think they counted as a knockdown? And he said, you know, he doesn't know, but you should be okay. He said he didn't, he didn't count it out. He wouldn't have counted it as a knockdown because I slipped. I think I went for a head kick and um, I slipped on the ground and he, he got on top of me, had a little scramble and he was in a front headlock. So that was the only little worry I had of maybe the judges might have seen something different. But other than that, no, I wasn't worried at all. Keith? Hey, Tyrell, Keith Schilling for sure, dog. Congratulations on the victory. Well, I didn't, I didn't get your question. It's too loud out there. Oh, I just said congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so your last fight was a no contest. So it was really short. Before that was the loss. Uh, I want to go back to that loss. Tell us, what did you learn about yourself in that fight? And, and how has that made you a better fighter now? That fight, I would say there was a lot going into that fight before the fight even happened that I just took for granted. Um, I, had two, I had two tears in each knee. Um, one happened, two of them happened at the beginning of camp that I was recovering through. And then one had happened the Wednesday of the fight week at, while I was there in Thackersville. Um, before that, I had a, a ESPN interview and, and I had TMZ talking to me, right. Going into that fight. 
So there was just so much buildup and like, I felt like the recognition was coming and had nothing to do with Tim. It was just me feeling like everything I had been working for was coming into fruition. And I didn't want to step away from it. I didn't want to step out of that limelight because I felt like I deserved it. And I felt like I was finally getting it. So I didn't, I didn't want to pull out. And that was just, I think, disrespectful to the sport and the game itself and, and disrespecting and discounting on Tim, Tim Johnson because, you know, he had a lot right on that fight himself and he, he was coming in there 100%. And so I think I just uh, learned just to, you know, hey, if, if you're not feeling 100%, don't disrespect the game. Don't disrespect your opponent and um, don't go into a fight like that. So it was just not letting everything else influence my decision. Yeah, totally understandable. Uh, I know you just mentioned that you had your sights set on Sergey Karatanov or possibly Linton Vizel, but it wasn't that long, long ago you kept calling out uh, Jake Hager, Jack Swagger, uh, he recently fought. What do you think of his performance? Is that a fight you still want? Jake Hager is not on my level in any in any form. He cannot wrestle me. And if you see, he almost got knocked out by a bum. So uh, I'm I'm not worried about Swagger. I I don't even shouldn't even say his name. Donna. Hi, Tyrell. I just have the uh, the one. It's a little bit out of left field, maybe. But uh, you've been there yourself. You've been uh, knocked out in. In, in a heavyweight fight, and the big talk in heavyweight combat sports at the moment is this this Deontay Wilder stuff that, that he's come out with during the last week. He claims that in the Tyson Fury fight, he got uh, there was a, a tampering with the gloves. I mean, you've been there. You've, you've, you've been finished in that kind of way. Do, do you kind of understand where he's coming from with making the excuses and stuff like that? Or what have you made of, of Deontay Wilder's wild comments this week? I didn't pay attention to Deontay Wilder. I don't give a <laughs> shit about him. I mean, I don't, know what, I don't even know what you're talking about. He claimed that uh, when he got knocked out by Fury that uh, his coach spiked his water. He said that Fury had the gloves on the wrong way, so he was punching him basically bare knuckle. It was, uh, it was a big talking point this week. Didn't care. Don't pay attention to it. No worries, man. Thank you. Simon? Simon, go ahead. Congrats on the win. Uh, the one question I have for you here is... Uh, how important was it for you this week uh, to pick up this win tonight? Extremely important. I mean, uh, I, I think that's where the nerves come from now that I'm sitting there thinking about it, just like finally getting back in the ring again. I just wanted to fight. You know, I was telling my coach all week, I was like, I'm just so excited to finally fight again because the last fight was a no contest. I only got in there for two minutes and 30 something seconds maybe. And then my last the last fight before that, I got knocked out in the first round. So I didn't even get to perform it again. So for me, it was just really getting the cage again, feeling out the, feel, just feeling a fight again. You know what I mean? You get, you, you start to miss that atmosphere and you get edgy for it, you know? So for me, it was just getting back in there, performing and just fighting. Sean, go ahead. Congratulations on the big victory, my friend. It's been a while since you fought, you know, obviously with uh, COVID-19, you know, we'll talk about, you know, not having to maintain a weight. Did you, were you able to uh, go binge a little bit, you know, with the quarantine, things could be kind of uh, a lot of downtime and stuff? No, I didn't take any time off from COVID. I got a key to the gym. So me and my coach kept working the whole time. We didn't, uh, we don't know what time off is. Definitely. Now, I, I was talking about maybe like uh, when you're being quarantined for the hotel, you didn't have to watch your weight as, as much as like other fighters. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm a heavyweight. I didn't have to watch, but I eat clean as it is, you know. So for me, it's uh, actually eating more food. I have a nutritionist now and I get in trouble because I don't eat enough food. I can go, you know, I don't usually don't eat unless I work out. So for me, it was changing my diet, making sure I'm getting enough calories. Our final question will come from the line of Dan Rauch. Hey, Tyrell, Dan Roush, Full Contact Fighter. Congrats on your win. You're really a knockout artist. Are you working on developing other parts of your game going forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think a lot of it have been uh, trying to incorporate a lot more kicks, um, more stand, just anything really, more stand-up, jiu-jitsu, everything. You know, we're just mixed martial arts, so you have to work on every facet of the game. And uh, we definitely are, are adding more tools to, the, tools to the bucket. And you've developed your entire career in front of an audience. Is it weird, this whole new normal, as it were, you know, uh, the testing and the kind of the empty stadium and so forth? No, I don't pay attention to that. I got a person in front of me trying to take my head off. So uh, I don't care if there's a thousand people, a million or, or none. Congrats, Tyrell. Thanks for the time. Thank you.